So quick reminder, these notes that I'm writing here, I'm going to put them into the network folder a little bit later. I'll remind you where the network folder is at. And then also these videos, I'm going to uh, upload them. Uh, if you want access to the videos, it's on the syllabus at the very top. Just send me an email asking for the SEO lectures, and then I'll send you the videos. So the very last thing we were talking about, black hat, white hat, gray hat, uh, we will go into detail about what what's correct, what's too far from white to gray, etc. We'll talk about all of that once we get to the webmaster tools. Uh, we'll also talk about this over and over, guilty until proven innocent. Uh, so basically the search engines have to uh, have a, a critical eye to everything, everyone's website, because there's just so much spam. It's so easy for a company to create a website for five dollars and then put their products up there and do a little bit more advertising and then suddenly they're selling all of this this uh, knockoff merchandise and whatever. <coughs> yes. Uh, I think I know you. I think you answered it, but uh, when I'm seeing those rankings like people pick those Wix. Mm -hmm. So those people are, you know, small business that takes Wix. They don't really get any. I'm just kind of confused that. Uh, so anybody small business who's a Wix account you can't really build off of that. Really, it's very contained. Or well, that's not the question for SEO, but. No, well, that, that's fine. It is, yeah. A lot of these kinds of websites like Wix and, Wix and Weebly, they do let a person create a very simple, quick website. And maybe that's all that someone needs. They don't need very much complexity. <clears throat> so whatever the Wix gives you or Weebly, that might be enough. So they pay whatever thousands to be number one, and then they, they get several clients that need a basic website, and it pays for itself. But if you do an SEO for them, Wix account, does it... Uh you can do some SEO for these Wix accounts, yeah. yeah that, that's what I thought, because uh, you're telling the owner, hey, yeah, you got to do a fair site. I'm just thinking of being in the future. I do, I do see it, because eventually what we're going to do is connect the search engines in a way. We're going to connect the search engine directly to your website. And I have people come in with a bunch of different kinds of websites, and pretty much every kind of website there is a way to do what we're going to talk about in the okay. class so yeah it doesn't it kind of shields you from a lot and it's training wheels a lot but you can still ride it that okay. bike. That's so, right. because you can't tell me you can't tell this person you're doing a bid for their seo but hey uh i can charge you this amount of money but you're saying does it have the limitations so there are going to be some limitations unfortunately yeah you just have to i don't know the full details says i i i haven't worked in my company we usually do a WordPress, yeah. so we we don't know how to do it with all of these, but I'm sure there's ways. And a lot of them give you this customer service, uh, so you call them up and then you get the details. Okay. Is there, sometimes they get confused in a uh, talk about, oh, I have a Wix site. Oh, my God. So one more thing here. When, we did our, when I did a search for simply web design, my company didn't appear. It, lots of stuff appears. And one of the things that you might have been seeing are these maps. Uh, these maps, uh, I would say these are not the paid results, even though they, they look big and fancy and that they paid for it. This is related also to the different part of the algorithm. So if you, the ones that are clearly marked as ads, clearly they paid, but these are not. These are related more to ratings. So now there's a whole new aspect of SEO that we need to think about, which is ratings because there's so many websites, so many good and bad websites. Well, like in the real world, how do I know that movie is good? I don't want to waste my money to go to that movie and I didn't like it. Well, I might ask friends and family that have seen it and they give me their review. I might read newspaper or TV or um, web reviews and make a decision. I'm gonna watch that movie, it seems to be good. So ratings <coughs> and reviews are also very valuable nowadays uh, and this is related to SEO but it's a little bit more of SEM search engine marketing and I said earlier SEO is what you do on your website and SEM is what you do outside of your website so what's a big famous review site you might have heard about Yelp. Yelp any others that's the big one but what's that Google Google reviews Yep, they've got their own. Any others? Facebook is doing their own reviews. Maybe you heard of Kudzu. Not, not yet. 
could do Angie's List. Um, have you heard of Nextdoor? Nextdoor is like the local social network. You and all your neighbors connect together and you keep an eye out for crime in the neighborhood or sell stuff or all of that. So there's reviews there. There's so many review sites nowadays. Classic, um, classic restaurant review sites I get. Well, they used to be uh, the print magazine, then they're on, online now also. So there's all of these review sites, rating sites. So nowadays, it's also very important to keep up to date with your reviews. So you usually automatically get a Yelp account. You don't even have to sign up for it. Someone else creates it because they want to give you a great review or a not great review. And Google and all of these also give you an automatic space and we'll see why in a moment. But uh, nowadays part of what, you're, what you need to do with SEO is not only what's on your website but what's off of your website which is your Twitter, your Facebook, social media and then this review stuff. So briefly, we'll talk about it here, and then we'll get into detail a little later. Yes? Would um, Amazon's reviews be in that category? They would, although that's a lot more specialized because usually it is for a product. So if I am a t-shirt company and I'm selling t-shirts on Amazon, then definitely the reviews on Amazon are very important. But if I'm a web designer... I've used it where even if I'm not wanting to get a t-shirt, I'll just whatever item I'm looking for, I'll use it as a review scale or search. Instead of just saying, instead of doing a, a Yelp review, I'll maybe go to Amazon and say, okay, what's the latest on uh, smartwatches? Yeah, but again, that, that depends a lot on, uh, on often some sort of physical product. If I'm a web designer, I can't really sell my web designer right. services on Amazon. Right, or so a service or something. Exactly, right. services uh, usually don't work there. Uh, products work on Amazon so it's uh, we'll go into detail as the class goes on but very briefly just to touch on it here regarding ratings um, we have of course bad reviews and we have good reviews so here's a here's a big secret good reviews are good for your business Now you know the big secret. The other big secret, bad reviews are good for your business. Uh, let me explain let me explain why. Yes. If you have a small business, Yelp and all these review companies, they can review your company even if you don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we need to be on top of it. Even, I, even if I don't want reviews, yeah. uh, I think you can go directly to Yelp and say, please remove me from your system, but most people don't know about that or even do it, or it's such a long process that they don't do it. So we sort of have to embrace it. So it's a good and a bad, it's a double-edged sword. Um, what if you're in like a new restaurant, make your bakery, mm -hmm. and they, they just want to hear the other bakeries don't want competition. They can say whatever they want. They could, but let me go into detail how to combat that. So, good reviews are good, bad reviews are good. Bad reviews are good in the sense that they are an opportunity, opportunity to create a good review. Someone has various reasons to write a bad review, legitimate or not someone had a bad experience at my restaurant so they will write and say the food was cold and I found a tooth in the quiche so obviously they have that right then to go online and give me a terrible review it was a terrible experience it's legitimate that is still an opportunity for me to reach out to the person that gave me the bad review and said we're so sorry we're gonna fix this we had a bad day something happened we're gonna fix this so it could be turned around they could come back they could uh, eat at the place again and then it's amazing and then they put it back to a four or five star review instead of the one star so it's an opportunity to create a good review if you address the issue authentically and 
don't bribe. What I mean by that is, and here's the dark side of this, this is exactly what you were saying about, well, I'm a brand new restaurant, and the restaurants down the street are going to put a negative review. And then people are going to see this restaurant's terrible. Well, Yelp and all of these review sites do, even though it's kind of hard to believe they are on our side, in that they will they get better and better at filtering out these fake reviews. They get better at seeing, okay, seven reviews from other restaurants to this restaurant, we won't count it. It's obviously trying to game the system. Those other restaurants are obviously trying to hurt this restaurant. And it's not always perfect, but they're trying to address that and, and deal with it, that obviously bad reviews get filtered out. For example, a person that has never done a Yelp review has less value than a person that has done two or three or five or 10 or 20. So if a person creates a brand new Yelp account simply to trash you, Yelp will most likely diminish their, their review, remove it or derank it or just not make it important for it to hurt you. If a person does constantly do reviews, you know, two reviews every week or whatever, and they've built up 100 reviews, okay, then that's the one you worry about. If they then do give you a bad review, and they do have this history of being a reviewer on Yelp, that's the one to really address like this, as I'll detail in a moment. But those ones about people just coming online to trash you, I wouldn't quite worry about that. Yelp will filter them out. The other dark side is there's a cottage industry of people uh, going on Yelp and giving bad reviews expecting to get something for free because a lot of small businesses are very scared and they I just talked to a, uh, an, a uh, you know a pest control person just yesterday and he told me exactly what I'm about to tell you here that's happening to one of his friends uh, people go and review a business they never set foot in and they never bought anything about give them a bad review the small business is scared and they say okay we're so sorry here's 10 percent off your next sale here's a free dessert next time we're sorry we'll, we'll fix it that's the bribing part they want to get those good reviews so they think right away let me give you something for free like in the real world but this doesn't work in the real world because they never set foot in my restaurant and i just gave them a free meal if someone did show up to the place in the real world i say okay please let me see your receipt and let me fix that well there's some proof that they were there eventually digitally and all of that there's very it's very hard to prove that so you can turn a bad review into a good review even if it's a legitimate one that yes they are a legitimate reviewer they did have a bad time etc it is completely legitimate you still don't want to bribe them to improve the, the rating and what the pest control guy was saying he he was saying one of my other competitors that has a big old pest control business they have someone on the payroll that their only job is to deal with Yelp reviews and he says what they do is they give stuff away for free all the time and I said that company is getting bled dry uh, they're, they're having someone tell their friend, hey, you can get a free uh, pest inspection if you say, if you give them a bad review. And that other company is falling into that. The one that I dealt with said they, they are falling into that. So be careful here. Let's say it is a legitimately bad review. You want to address it without bribing. So the way you'll do this is, you know, example, acknowledge the problem. We get so mad at big companies, AT&T, Verizon, Cox, Time Warner, whatever. We get so big at them because they're so big and I can't talk to anyone. And they put me on hold for so long and I don't get a result. Well, we're not big companies. We should be able to deal with our customer service issues much more directly. One of them is simply saying, okay, we, we hear your problem. We're going to fix it. We, we had a bad day. That driver had, was in a bad mood. He's no longer working with us. We're going to fix it. We feel your pain. Uh, that's going to take you a lot more further because we're so used to deal with companies that don't care about us. So acknowledge the problem. Show how you will fix it. But don't give anything away for free. No 10% coupon, no free meal, no buy one, get one, nothing like that at all. Because you don't know if, number one, if it's going to be fake. And number two, you, you don't need to give free things for a real legitimate customer. You may give away that, that free meal or whatever, and they still don't change their review. So it's better to be open and respond in public 
on Yelp and all of those. As a company, you can respond to reviews, good or bad. And as a company, you're, you're responding publicly. So I'll say here, also do it publicly, so that people see you're trying to fix it, and even if it never gets review, and even if it never gets fixed and it stays at one star, other people will see you tried to fix it, and they never, the the complainer never acknowledged it or never changed it or whatever. But you're trying. You're a real company, real people, not a faceless corporation. So this is why bad reviews could be good. You could turn them into good reviews, or even from one star to three stars, better than one star. If you, if you just think that they're bad and then you're going to yell at the person, you're wrong, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, definitely don't do that, <laughs> especially publicly. And don't even do it privately because nothing is private. I'm having a conversation back and forth with a customer in private. They take a screenshot of the conversation. They put it public on their Facebook. You can copy what's exactly on your screen. So nothing is private. So do it publicly and um, legitimately, authentically, don't bribe, don't beg, but just show you're acknowledging the problem and you're going to fix it. Yes? Have you ever seen where a person that's complaining says, I, I want a coupon or a discount? Um, not, any, not anymore as much, now that co companies kind of know a little bit more about it. Um, if they did, how would you respond? Well, that's where you respond right there about it's our policy to not I give see. away. Yeah, we're sorry, and we're going to fix it in this way, but our policy is we, we don't give that away for free. And you can further explain if you want or not, but maybe someone is trying to scam, scam you, so don't worry about it. Or maybe someone is legitimately, I do want something for free. Well, in that case, you're, you're going to be more about, okay, um, we're going to try to fix this. Please come to our store, talk to our manager, and we'll kind of work it out. So that far, you don't have to fully say it online because then other people will see, oh, they're going to give something away for free. I want right. that. So it's still going to be up to them to come to you in person or on the phone or something to figure it out. And I've dealt with that a lot, okay. that people do want something online, but we guide them to talk to the manager or the owner and then deal with them that way. So do this publicly. publicly. Um, going back to good reviews, they're good, obviously. They give you a great review, but can also be used show how good, how well you manage your business, meaning recommendation, follow up with good reviews, with thank you comments. Businesses often focus so much on the negative that they forget about the positive, and everyone does this. Um, Everything's good, getting a lot of positivity, I get one negative thing and that ruins my whole day. Well, same thing with businesses on review sites. You're spending all of this time fixing the problems, hopefully not a lot of problems, but you're fixing them. You forget to acknowledge the good customers that took the moment to write something. Because unfortunately, it's so easy to be negative, especially online, than to be positive. So those that write something good are gold, are the best customers. If someone had such a bad experience to call you out on it online, people that have the great experience, they just had the great experience and they move on with their life. I've got a life to live and those that take the time to write something positive, great. Reply to them and say, thank you, Janet, for your continued service. We'll always do our best. You know, just something positive to keep it positive to show people that you are active, a real legitimate company that cares about your customers. So all of this, which we will continue to, to talk about, goes back to the search engine results where there were those maps with ratings. Those were not paid. They look like they were, and they're high up there, but these over here are not paid. So yeah, Web Design San Diego, and Binary M, and Design SEO Hosting, and Zen Den Web, they, they didn't pay for this, but it's based on their reviews. Now, it's also still a little wonky because, okay, why did four stars get higher than five stars and five stars? That stuff there is still part of the algorithm. It doesn't know exactly where I'm at, so maybe it's trying to do it by location and it thinks I'm down here. I don't know, but these 
are based on Yelp reviews and over on on Google same sort of thing these are coming from Google reviews so Bing partners with Yelp to show reviews Google has their own review system so it shows their own review system and yeah it's still kind of wonky because okay no reviews but still visible here but it's not really about paid so it's just about actual reviews last thing I'll say about reviews is a lot of people think uh, well th these are fake these are paid they just got their friends and family to review and yeah to some degree that that is like that but like I said uh, these companies Yelp and Facebook and such want to make their reviews legitimate uh, for, for people to use them so even if you say okay half the reviews are fake so if we look at no, that's just what I that's what I just said that uh. it's uh, I'm not exactly sure why it, it doesn't quite show it so even if we do half of fake reviews okay half of five is two and a half let's say two reviews are real three are fake two real reviews that is very low I might not fully believe that but over here 30 reviews <clears throat> half of them are fake let's say 15 are real then I can believe 15 real reviews I can't convince 15 people to give me a good review probably so the more reviews there are the more it is real you know perfect five stars two reviews which is the owner's mom and cousin but over here with 30 even if you take half of them fake 15 real reviews I, I can't convince I can't convince my mom to log on and create a Yelp account and give me a good review she can barely check her email so to do all of those fake reviews at a certain point they're not fake so uh, I would tell people uh, the more reviews the more real it is so all of this was our introduction to looking at uh, ranking on these search engines I didn't find my company with a generic search. Did you find your company with a generic search? Well, that was a bit of a trick question because that's the old way. Old search method. Simple keyword search, which is you know, I searched dentist, or I searched web design, or I searched affordable caterer. It doesn't have to be one word, keyword, one phrase, but a simple one. That's the old way. Not as effective anymore. used by spammers it's basically gray hat almost black hat new way long tail keyword search This is the big focus that we'll do in the class. It's best to explain long tail keyword search as a graphic. Let me draw a simple little graphic for you. I'll put this graphic in the network folder also a little later. Long tail keyword search. So I've got a graphic here. I'm going to use our fancy thousand dollar pen here to draw on my screen. And uh, I'm going to have um, I've got a simple X and Y. Um, we've got down here um, keyword. And up on the top, frequency. Frequency, and then the way the chart works. It's just 
sloping graph, something like this. Okay, so what this means, this is our long tail keywords. There are some keywords over here, bakery, that are used a lot. Other companies use this. My competitors, the spammers, are using a keyword over here a lot. Therefore, it's hard for me to be found. I'm a needle in a haystack. I'm yet another dentist, another baker. There are keywords over here more specific. Bakery in San Diego. So over here. That's going to eliminate a lot of other people. A bakery in New York. A bakery in Moscow, Idaho. So some keywords are a little bit more specific or less used. Way over here, very specific words. Family-owned bakery in San Diego specializing in gluten-free food. It's a lot smaller. There is a point where you're too broad and you're too specific. Somewhere over here is where you want to be. Some keyword that is specific enough, but not so specific that no one is searching for. And this is the big challenge of modern SEO. I need to figure out keywords to add to my site, to use on my site, uh, that are specific enough to get found by the right people, but not so specific that no one finds me. So you know, the golden zone is somewhere over here. Not so far out over here, no one's searching. Not so broad over here that everyone's searching, and you're a needle in a haystack far over here there is no haystack but no one's looking for it so we're trying to find words over here so the example of my text too simple is dentist web design affordable caterer a little bit more long tail it would be family dentist Eastlake. That's going to eliminate all of these people in Santee or Oceanside or Eastlake, uh, Illinois or, or whatever. So somewhere over here, web design. Okay, instead of searching web design, a person might search for um, web design for restaurants. You see that it's just more words, more phrases, more more detail about what someone is searching for. Yes? But how on a website is it separated so that it's not, you know, in, within that it's more broad? So if you have, you know, the word dentist versus family dentist in East Lake, but if these are just words on the website, how does it decipher the uh, more specific phrases from each individual word in it? The search engine, uh, the search engines do get smarter about looking at them in context. Uh, it is looking for this sort of little chunk of information, not just dentist. It's trying to search. The search engine is going to scan everything about your site and process everything about your site and memorize everything about your site. It's going to pick up on these sort of phrases that you see throughout your site, where it's going to see family dentist East Lake either close together like this or near itself. That's how it differentiates that it's, you're just not doing a basic keyword, you're doing a more complex keyword, long tail keyword. So it's basically the search engines are getting smarter to understand your intent of what you're trying to do on your site. Not just the old spam way of putting you know, 70 words that don't really relate in a run-on sentence. It is about real content that we will create in the class and figure out these words that the search engine will understand. There is the limit of this, um, like, uh, the words that can put on a website. Yes, um, but there, when, when we actually do it, I'll, I'll point it out a little bit better. Um, but it's, it's going to depend, and they don't, again, this is, they don't tell us, make sure you only put seven. You know, this is the part where they're not going to tell us exactly, but they're going to guide us about here's ideas that you should do. Now, the old method also. Um, was one keyword used over and over. 
So it would be uh, victordentist.com. My logo would have the word dentist. The, the very first sentence of my website would say, Welcome to Victor's Dentist Shop. I'll practice. So it's a little hard to explain before we actually do it, but the old way was using that one simple keyword too many times. That was that keyword stuffing. Okay, the new way uh, is you've got the longer keyword, yes, but also several on topic related long tail keywords used through my site so if i'm a if i'm a dentist and here's a phrase family dentist in east lake what other keywords might people be searching for do you think Affordable child dentistry. Maybe they're also searching for. Hmm? Like what about stuff like relevant to dentistry for the search like toothpaste? Is that effective? Or? Yes. Tooth pain um, you know, um, young child's tooth pain. So all of these three are related to dentistry. All three of these I would use throughout my site. Not just the one keyword dentist over and over. The, the simple keyword dentist, even the simple affordable caterer. I would have a sort of a deeper long tail phrase of what people nowadays would search for in variations on my site. Question? Oh, so like something that I was looking into was like, you know, when you Google something and then there's the question, like if someone were to write, uh, what does it mean if your child's tooth is hurting? Yeah. And then you click on it and it connects to a certain website. Is that sort of tied in with SEO and why that random is. website is coming up for that question? It is, because then as we get deeper into it, one of the other aspects of SEO is blogging, is writing content, long form content. So that dentist must have had some sort of article or blog post on their site that, that explains that and has those keywords. Why does my child have pain? Well, they're going to explain in their blog post what is common tooth pain in a child of two years old. And guess what? We offer services to fix that. So uh, we'll, we'll cover that. And that's basically most likely some sort of aspect of blogging where you create content questions that people might search for, add them to my site the right way, which we'll talk about and that could get you traffic. Several on topic related long term keywords used throughout my site and then for the deeper discussion later, for example, in blog posts. If you don't know what blogs are, we'll talk about it later, but basically articles. So we have to develop several and I can't tell you three or six or twelve or whatever it's gonna depend on your business your competition how many of these sorts of phrases to develop to to use um, on your site uh, another kind of phrase for this is uh, natural language search queries super fancy so natural language search queries. That just means searching for something like a person. We've used websites for so long that we might think, well, here's the trick. I need to put this word in quotes, and I need to add a plus symbol, and I need to do all these tricks. Well, now the search engines are moving away from that. They're going more into natural, uh, into natural um, queries because of this. What's a good an Italian food restaurant nearby. Here are some listings for nearby restaurants within two miles. Here are some listings for Italian restaurants with good ratings nearby. That's what it told me. I asked it a natural question that I asked the, the phone and the class answered that it answered here in a natural way. So 
this is what the search engines are starting to do more now because now we've got these little phones iPhone or Android or whatever phone that now you can ask it like a regular question and then it recognizes, oh you're in this area Kearney Mesa and nearby it's giving me a bunch of results with star ratings and a map and all of that and a Yelps reviews and pictures let's see what it tells me is good so it says Felipe's Pizza Restaurant because it's got four stars out of 228 reviews. There's Cucina Basilico with five and a half stars with 91 reviews and so forth. It saw my location, I asked it a regular question, and then it gave me a result. So that's sort of what the long tail keyword is. Natural language, like a real kind of question without doing special tricks on the search engine because they're trying to move away from that because the spammers abuse it. Question. Underneath it in what way? So let's say you're building a website and you have text, just like you have text up there, and the Lisp 10 notepad can allow you to put a graphic over some of this text, some of these, these words. <coughs> nope, that's black hat. Let me stop you there. Any of these techniques that are trying to fool the search engines, they're going to be black hat. So if you're saying for me to write some text here and then I put a graphic on top of it so that the person can't see it and only the search engine, mm -hmm. that's black hat and that will uh, be bad and you, it will, you will rank badly because you're trying to trick the search engine. And the search engines, the funny thing, uh, counterintuitively, count, counterintuitively they say, don't rank for the search engines, rank for people. You know, don't follow these techniques only to please the search engine, do this to please the people that are searching. So why would you put text hidden behind a picture that the person can't even use or read, that is? For the search engine optimization. Yeah, so but again, there's words that, like, you may have a, have a specific message, um, but you know that the industry has termino terminology that, you know. Exactly, the industry has terminology. The people in the industry have the terminology. So you wouldn't want to put that text hidden. This is like when I said earlier, if I wrote white text on a white background, the search engine can see it, the people can't, that's bad. Yeah. You don't want to put a picture on top of text that the person can't see but the search engine can and that's bad so it does it is like a double-edged sword I want to do every single technique that the search engine will love the search engines themselves tell you don't do search techniques only for the search engines do them for people don't annoy people uh, don't drive people away and then they will um, penalize you for for doing these gray hat or black hat techniques but what if you are a family dentist but you don't really want to put that in your marketing and you would like the word family in there. Put it in. Uh, I don't see why you would not put it in. If, if, if I am a plumber, I want to promote everything that I do as a plumber. I don't want to hide anything. So if I am a family dentist, if I'm trying to get that demographic of people, families, to come bring their children, I, I see no reason to hide it. Uh, it should be public. Not that I'm saying put the word family dentist as your very first word. Again, I, I can't fully just say just yet how to do this. We'll get to that. But the idea is, yes, you want to show as much as possible to people that are trying to find you all of these keywords and content for them to find you. Where you put it and how you put it, we will, we will get to that. So this is, um, this is the idea of the long tail keyword. Uh, natural language, longer phrases, uh, putting it in your site, how and where, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that. But this is the big idea nowadays of modern SEO, not simple keywords, more, more detailed keywords. I have another handout that will help you, uh, that will help you with this, but this is, the, this is the general idea, specific keywords. I'll put this picture into the network folder a little bit later, but any questions on this? And let me give you this other handout because then now uh, let's say we wanted to refine these these search terms okay web design so now I would put in here uh, web designers for San Diego businesses and if I get any pop-ups down at the bottom that are suggesting what I should search for well that's good that's an idea that's starting to get to give me an idea itself we'll have an activity in a moment but as we start to use the search engine web design for 
And the search engine is saying, okay, do you think, do you think web design for sale, web design for dummies, web design for beginners, web design for therapists? The search engine itself can also help kind of guide you uh, about what you're looking for. Um, this is also part of competitor analysis. So we'll do competitor analysis with a handout in just a moment, saying here, uh, part of the way to build your long tail keyword strategy is via competitor analysis. You know, together we can brainstorm phrases and keywords for many businesses. Well, if you're not with a group that can help you brainstorm, it's going to be hard. What keywords, what phrases, what content should I add on my site? The best way to start to figure that out is to check the competition. We'll do that in a moment, but here also use the search engines themselves to figure out these keywords. So the suggestions that the search engine is giving you. I have a small business. Let's say I'm an artist. I'm an artist and I also want to get found. What, what are results that are happening for web design for artists? And then just to compare that one also with, with Google. So on both search engines, the same search. Just to get more information, Squarespace number one, articles, Hamilton web design, Hamilton website design.com or Hamil, Hamiltro. Starving artist web design. And then over here, web, web design for artists.com, website for artists.com. Anyway, let me give you another handout in, in the network folder. Um, let me put another handout in there for you, and I'll remind you where the network folder is. One moment. I've got a, a handout about uh, long tail keyword strategy. So the, the network folder, I put a brand new file in there to get this file. Go to your desktop here and open up computer window on the top left. So minimize all your windows and go to the desktop and double click computer on the top left then you will see a section of network location and classroom data drive Z Z as in zebra double click classroom data drive Z the very top the first folder is classroom data for 2017 open that folder classroom data at the very top and then our class is Campos Fall 2017 SEO open that folder and earlier if you came in a little bit late this is where the syllabus is at the code of conduct and I just added a new document Campos SEO 1 long tail strategy you want to copy that to your desktop don't double click it from my folder copy it to your desktop just drag it to your desktop or if you brought a USB drive you can plug your USB and take it with you or if you didn't bring a USB you can email it to yourself if you need help with that we'll cover that later but grab a copy of that long tail strategy and if you're having trouble finding it let me know once you copy it to your desktop let's look at it Okay, so this handout here, again, there's nothing uh, to turn in, even though it seems like an assignment that you would turn in. This is an activity, however. So we'll, we'll cover it a little bit here, then we'll, we'll get to the end of the day for you to, to practice it, because again, this class is very hands-on. Uh, whatever you learn in these classes, you want to apply in the real world, especially if you've got a real website. 
If you don't have a real website, just learn this stuff, kind of try it out, and then when you have a website, you do it. But basically here, uh, we're talking about that you'll have a better chance of being found uh, when you're more detailed, like authentic Italian food. If someone just searched for Italian restaurant, you won't get found, but maybe authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. That's a long tail. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. And I do have to say throughout the class, uh, even if you come every single time and learn every topic, it's still not a guarantee that you'll rank number one, unfortunately, because of your competition, because of spammers, and a variety of things. So if a company were to hire us to do SEO, and we were to sign our contract and everything, we never say, we guarantee you'll be number one in a week or a month, in a year. We cannot guarantee any company will be number one. We can guarantee that they will rank better. They might have been number 30, and now they're number 10. Well, still page one. They might have been number 10, and they want number one, and we can only get them up to number four. And that's just the way it is, unfortunately, that for a variety of factors that we'll talk about, even if you do it all right about keywords, you still don't rank well, because keywords is just one aspect of modern SEO. We need to talk about content itself, and we need to talk about social media and blogging and lots of things. So just by being a pro at this doesn't mean you'll be number one, usually. Uh, it'll mean you'll rank a lot better. So I'll often have potentially rank better and probably do better and so forth. I cannot guarantee any results in this class or even for clients that hire us. But we can say that within this amount of time period, three months or whatever, you will see an improvement. Uh, I, I can't say in one month you'll be number one or I, even in 12 months. It just really matters, variety of factors. Yes? How often are you updating to your SEO? Is it weekly, daily? Monthly? The SEO really isn't done that often. More that you're doing now is the SEM. Once you set up your basic structure of your site following the tactics of SEO, which is what you do on your site, then it's up to what else are you doing on your site, often outside of it. Are you on Facebook? Are you writing blogs? Are you active on YouTube or Snapchat or whatever? So what are you doing besides your website? Because you're not going to rewrite these words every three months, six months, or whatever. Right. Even You're going to be active on other platforms. The marketing aspect, SEM, search engine marketing, to keep your visibility and get customers and all of that. So it's all your peripheral yeah. inputs directly to the website. Yeah. After you set up the basics of the website, then it's mostly going to be about what's in the periphery. Yeah. So we did a version of this already, the old way, a very simple keyword. And we did a version of this, a more complex keyword, although there's details here. So like an activity, if you wanted to do this for real, this is what you would do. You would go to a search engine, and I would recommend you do this both on Google and Bing, and you search for a simple keyword in the topic of your business. I saw some results. For the first page of results, write the title and description from each real site, meaning I would uh, you know, have a, a piece of paper or a, or a Word document or something, and I'd start to collect results. This is what an SEO company would be hired to do. This is not just all like some sort of blind or like magic or something. It's, it's a process of gathering the results of the competition to figure out what we need to do to be better than the competition. So the example here is if I search for, for web design simply with the word web design in a Word document, I would collect some of these results. And I would try to collect the ones of like real businesses. Uh, I don't care about that news article, skip it. I don't care about this article on Wikipedia, skip it. I would find results of real companies, and you can often see what they are by reading the descriptions. So in this case, Jacob Tyler might be one of the ones that I would use as an example of competition. So the handout says, OK, um, for the first page of results, write down for each real site. So let's say Jacob Tyler is one of them. Click and view three of the, three of those results and write notes. You're you're checking the competition. Again, in the real world, if I have a restaurant, that's very hard to do competitor analysis. I have to walk into my competitor's restaurant and sit down and buy their food. I'm going to give them business. Well, in the real world, I'm trying to see how does their veal parmesan taste or how chewy is that lasagna. 
I'm seeing what the competition is doing, and then they recognize me. Oh, you're the owner of the guy down the street, and they kick me out. So here, digitally, you can research your competition, and they won't know about it. And you're going to see what their website is and what it does. And not that you're going to steal anything that they're doing, but you're going to see what they're doing for you to see what you can do better. And a lot of us don't have the language of what, what's a good website, what's working well. I have examples here. Check their website to see when was it updated. Does it have a blog, articles? Is the design modern or does it look old and clunky? Is it mobile friendly? Can I visit their site and it looks good on a mobile phone? Or does it look all weird and out of place? And then just like viscerally, what do you like about it? I have to I have to agree my competitors website colors look nice what don't you like about it that might be easier to do but you're gonna look at the competition kinda ask yourself these questions write it down and the point of this is for you to figure out are you doing these things are you doing them better they're number one for various reasons one of them is their website itself are they writing blogs how does this is their design look is it mobile friendly nowadays that's also one of the biggest things if a person visits your website on their phone does it look good on the phone an old website is gonna look the text is gonna be too big out of place and that's one of the big things to do nowadays make sure your website is programmed to look good on a mobile phone it might not happen automatically The other side of this coin then is with a long tail keyword strategy with a longer phrase. But I have here also in a clean search engine with a note. The note is down here. A clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and the browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. So for example, what's happening here is People come to this class all the time and tell me, you know, I kind of know a little bit about SEO and I do searches and I do long tail searches and I come up right away at the top. But when I go to my friend's house, I'm on page 12. Well, that's because you're on your own computer searching over and over for the same words and the search engines and the web browsers, they're not trying to fool you, they're trying to help you. They see that you're searching for the same things over and over. So they're going to show you results that they think you want. Well, someone that is trying to come to my dentistry for the first time types that keyword of San Diego dentist, and for the first time, the search engine says, okay, you're looking for this, here's results. So those results are going to be different from a computer that has never searched a topic compared to a computer that has searched that topic already. So a clean search engine is one where you go to the settings of your web browser and you have to figure that out on your own but somewhere in the settings of your web browser there is a way to clean to clean your history to clean the cookies so that you're like a brand new person searching so I have listed private browsing is useful but let me get back to that in a moment because it's important to get results like how your potential visitors would get these results people say okay well uh, I'm going to go over here into incognito or private browsing uh, and I'm safe no because this this only stops tracking you from this point everything you did previously is still in memory so when I search any of these websites what's this if I go directly so I'm not in private mode and I go to Jacob Tyler it, it went into the memory that I went to Jacob Tyler if I then open up a private window let's say I close the other one I open up a private window and I start going look at that it remembers Jacob Tyler so private browsing only helps you from this point forward that it won't remember your searches and your history but it, any previous searches in history are in memory so I still would recommend you go to the settings of your web browser and everyone's a little different. You find somewhere to clean out your cookies, clean out the history, go to private mode, and then you will have a search engine, an experience that is more like a real person searching. It won't give you biased results. So 
That's why this one, the new way, I recommend on a clean search engine. And I recommend also having a web browser just for these types of searches. Because when you clean out your cookies and your history, it's going to log you out of your bank. It's going to log you out of your email. It's going to log you out of everything. And a lot of us don't remember our passwords because we're automatically logged in. And suddenly you're logged out of everything. So if you use all the time Google Chrome for your internet life, go get a free copy of Firefox and use that one to erase the history and go private because it doesn't matter what's getting saved there, your main internet history is on Chrome. Or if you're usually all day long on Safari, go download a free copy of Opera or Chrome or whatever and use that other browser as your searching competitor analysis tool. You know, I might be on Internet Explorer, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to go download a copy of Safari. And that one I'm going to clean out and reset and be private and it's not going to affect my bank account login on the other one that I have to call them up and reset it because I never remember my password. So, using the handout, engage in competitor analysis to determine what's working for the competition, what's not working for you, in that you don't have that. get inspiration. Don't steal. I'm not saying look at your competition and see look at that great great amazing website. I'm gonna I'm gonna save their picture and put it on my site. No, you're going to see that they've got great photos of their food and whoops my photos look terrible. I shot them on my phone without good light. They look bad, not appetizing. They shot their food with a better camera or usually better light or a better background you know if I put my food right here it's gonna look terrible because this background is terrible but if I put the plate of food right here where it's a simpler background and take a photo that's often a better photo so you're gonna see what other people's websites look like you're gonna get inspiration apply it in your own way to your own website don't you know don't steal a person's actual photos and text and all of that uh, because if the webs, if the search engines see that this phrase of you know authentic Italian cuisine, uh, founded in Genoa, Italy, if you've got exactly the same sort of phrasing on one site and another site, the search engine says, "What's going on here? Why does it say the exact same thing in the exact same syntax and everything on two sites? These are probably spammers." And as I said, guilty until proven innocent. So don't copy and paste someone else's work onto your own. The search engines are scanning the internet all day long, 24 hours a day, and when it sees these same copies, something's up, guilty until proven innocent. You can also do it for reconnaissance, recon. Again, seeing what the competition is doing. They've introduced a new dish, we'll introduce a new dish, better than theirs. They've started to use Facebook more and more. We need to get on Facebook. And it is a sort of this competition digitally, which happens in the real world. One business on Main Street does something. Another business two blocks down does something similar. And they're in constant competition. And for various factors, one will win out. Here digitally, we have this ability to do recon and analysis. And in the real world, this is what we would do. We, we get hired for these companies to do this. We, they want to rank better? Well, yeah, we will do a website or SEO for any company, but we don't know anything about tile. So we have to engage in reading about what, what the client is, what the competition is, what's the state of the tile business in San Diego, what do the websites of tile businesses in San Diego look like. And we have to do this and create this document, like a 10-page document that we give to the owner that says, here's what we found about your competition, here's where we see they're weak, here's where we see that you could be stronger, here's what you could do differently. And that, of course, comes from experience. 
most of the people in my company have over a decade of experience in web design and this stuff is changing all the time and if you are just dipping your toe in it yeah it's complicated it's not hard but it's complicated I've got to take the time to do this and write it down I don't know the full terminology but I know what I how does the saying go I don't know I don't know art but I know what I like so what's working what isn't so then tangibly after you do the competitor analysis checking do they have social media contact info etc you develop a list of 10 simple keywords five of them long tail and then we actually do this on a site I'll show you how to add it to the site but you don't know what to add to your site until you do this activity so if you do have a website that we can use, we'll start using it next time. You'll need to use your login information. So come with your login information next time. The strategy is by researching your competition, you're seeing what's worked for them, you're defining what sets you apart, and what you have to offer in contrast to the competition. You'll use your long tail keywords throughout your site, but you will also create content that fits the overall theme. You'll become an authority in the field you've targeted. You will create content on a regular basis. You will spread this content through the internet. So we'll go into detail about what all of that means. But if you do get the book, chapter one talks about that. The book is probably like $4 on Amazon. So we're going to take one more break. And when we come back, we'll have a little bit of lab time in that if you would like to try these things in class, you could. But I'm going to end the main lecture at this point. We'll take our break. We'll have a little lab time if you'd like to stay to work on that, a little one-on-one -on -one and such. And then we'll wrap up at 1. And then we'll continue next time. More handouts, more lecture, more hands-on. Tell a friend that class exists. And uh, we'll go on.